Hello everybody. Today is Thursday, February 8th, 2024. Um, right now, at this very moment, as I'm starting this recording, it is 2.06 p.m. And this is my daily devotional for the day to keep myself accountable for diving into God's word and uh, to keep myself uh, responsible and to hold myself accountable for doing the same. Thank you for joining me for today. Today's verse comes from Matthew. I am so sorry. I have something in my eye. Today's verse <laughs> comes from Matthew. It's a little bit of a longer passage. Um, it's a few verses. It's Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 45. So let me get there for you here. Uh, this verse came by way of the Bible bot in my Discord server. Um, it has a really interesting habit of changing to translations that I don't tell it to change it to. So I actually had to see the translation that it gave me, I think, the RSV or something initially. Um, and then uh, I was like, okay, well, let me read it and figure out what's going on. And so I, I read it. Um, just in the, because I have the KGB in my Bible. And so that's what we are going to be doing for today. I'm also going to be using and deploying a little bit of uh, the Logos uh, Bible software, scripture software, I guess you would call it, into this for today's devotional. Something I've been wanting to try a little bit. Um, I've like used the internet and researched and watched videos and read articles and things, but I want to try to at least use a little bit of a uh, some scholarly knowledge that's way above my pay grade, but <laughs> let's uh, let's dive in again. This is Matthew chapter five, verses forty-three through forty-five. All right, Matthew chapter five, verses forty-three through forty. Okay, <clears throat> ye have heard that it hath been said. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Wow, powerful. Those are Jesus' words, too. That comes from a whole long, dare I say, tirade <laughs> that Jesus goes on throughout that takes up like two whole pages on this, like a page and a half, two pages, something like that. And he keeps going. He still is going even after that part of the passage. But that's the one that came up in today's devotional. Basically, previous to, you know, Jesus coming and there was like an understanding of that. Like, people, you know, of course were good to people that were good to them. But then ostracized or outed those that were seen as the out group of the time. Who had different cultural ideals or who otherwise conflicted with people and the enemies as it were weren't necessarily enemies at war it was just enemies like culturally or even religiously i know there was a, the big whole thing but with the the pharisees of the time and whatnot and so all of that was culminating into what jesus was saying here is that you previously loved the people that you loved and then hated the people that you hated hated your enemies but i tell you you love everyone you love all of them um you bless the uh you bless them um and it doesn't matter who they are you bless them you pray for them you wish good to them regardless of what they're doing to you in the moment of course there are times for justice that's not to say that if somebody does something hurtful to somebody and they're beating them up or whatever that they shouldn't get like arrested or something but you don't wish additional harm on them 
Um, you don't wish that they like die or anything. Another thing that does come up a lot too is that with um, with the the love part of this, love everybody is the love your neighbor. The whole that's a very famous piece. Love your neighbor as you would love yourself. God commands us not just in this passage, but um, the verse is escaping me. But God commands us that He has two commands. He has the first command and the, the more important one, I suppose. But these are His two commandments. Like Jesus says that there are two of them that are seemingly the most important to Him. I, in the verse, I know of it generally. Somebody asks Him what those commandments are. Like what are the most important? And Jesus says. To love God with all of your heart and all of your soul. And to love your neighbor as you would love yourself. And that's the end. That's it. N not really. There's a lot of... Uh, Jesus wasn't silent on a lot of things. But those are the... That's the whole cusp of what Christianity is meant to be. Um, you could take love in a wide myriad of different ways on what it's meant to mean but if you look to to how Jesus operated it was primarily by way of of justice towards people being generally good to them not like uh, trying to oust them or be otherwise profane towards them in any way and giving them grace where grace must be due if somebody is having a struggle and they're just having a very hard time. You don't just egg it on. You don't just be like, why are you, you recognize that that is happening and you help that person. You don't proselytize them. You don't say, oh, because you're not this, that means you're suffering that. No, of course not. And in this passage here, to bring it back, in this passage here, Matthew 5, 43 through 45, he is basically kind of almost telling you that that applies regardless of who it is. That is, regardless of whoever is struggling, whoever is having some faith troubles, interpersonal troubles with friends or family, whoever... You pray, you bless them, and you pray for them, and you are good to those people, even to those who are outright like sinners or being bad or whatever. You pray for them, because why? What? What? What else? What else? Just what else? <laughs> God, Jesus, Christ Almighty Lord, gave graces to people who, you, even I, I, I fall into that trap where I'm like, wow, why did that person's not going to be good? And, and that's my fallible human brain thinking. But when I take a step back, I humble myself and I look at that from how Jesus is coming in and where I'm at. It's the exact same thing I should say to myself. Glory be, though, to Jesus Christ, Lord Almighty. He grants that grace regardless. It could be anybody. I've seen horror stories of people who have just been degraded, been bad to, hurt other people like on purpose, and they change their lives completely. I mean, the one that comes to mind unfortunately not no not, no not unfortunately actually yeah fortunately is Jeffrey Dahmer after being in prison for a while he converted um and as far as anybody was outwardly aware he really did convert to, to Christ and was a Christian and everything even after all of the evil 
the abhorrent stuff that he did. And we are commanded to love him. Pray for him. Say what you will about the inherent sinful nature of humans and how that goes about and, and propagates and influences how we go about our everyday lives. But if we take a step back, we are commanded to pray for those people. To be good to them. And who am I to say I'm any better? I mean, yeah, I've not murdered or anything, but I've lied. I've been bad towards people. Unjustly even so. Whether it be as a kid or in my young adult life, I, I, I like to think that I wasn't. But my individual perception is not the reality of the situation. Anything that falls short of God is nothing. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to put this back in its sleeve. Really powerful message today. Um, <sighs> Dear Lord, thank you every day for your grace. I can't even, you know, there's not a, I can't even put into words <laughs> I can't even begin to describe the feeling of joy of of just happiness in general of you, Lord, just in, in the presence of you. It it makes me happy. Truly, that your grace is that strong and powerful that it can extend to everybody. From the, the most normal of peoples, I suppose, to even the most bleak and, and dour and what we would look like as the most disgusting. Every single person can take hold of it. And that is powerful. You know that, Lord. I think of those words that Jesus said in this passage in Matthew. We are to pray and love and be gracious towards the people that persecute us, that are doing bad things, or maybe that are otherwise indifferent to a Christian livelihood, a Christian lifestyle. And now that I'm really taken aback by that, maybe I haven't. I mean, not, not maybe. I, I know I haven't. At some point or on some day somewhere, I should have extended that grace. I should have been a little bit more merciful towards someone. I should have maybe taken a step back and, and evaluated a situation a lot more fairly or something. But that's all you, Lord. You do it every time, every day. You are the all-powerful, all-good. I know you have our best interests in heart, Lord. I pray you watch over me and my family here in Florida, Lord, and my lovely girlfriend in West Virginia and her family. 
and all of the extended families out from them, Lord, and the entire world. I know your will be done. All in the glory of you there, Lord. Each and every day. I ask this, and I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you for all you do, Lord. Amen. All right. That is today's daily devotional. A little bit of a longer one. I know I had a longer one yesterday, too, but a little bit of a longer one for today. Um, but I appreciate you sticking with me throughout the entire thing if you're still here. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I really do enjoy doing these devotionals every day. Um, coming up on a, a month, a whole month straight of doing devotionals. Um, I knew YouTube would keep me committed to doing this because it's like a, a visual, you know, Pavlovian response, I guess, as it were, to reading the Bible and keeping myself responsible and accountable, you know. But again, I appreciate you being here. I'll see you in tomorrow's Daily Devotional. Thank you so much. God bless.